I guess in another hour we should be able to make it out of here and pop a spinnaker and go down because if it's northeast we're heading south southeast and that means that the wind won't be directly behind us we might actually get quite a nice run but we're expecting that wind to die off um, typically it's been dying off about three in the morning so we just got our fingers and toes crossed you know we just don't want to motor down there so hurry up and wait and as soon as that wind springs up a little more we'll get out of here Goodbye, Lady Musgrave. Thank till you. Till next time, Lady Musgrave. Yeah, till next time. We'll be back. We love you so much that we're going to come back. Still birds working though. Mm. You're working late. They are working late. I wonder if that's how birds work. You know, like the good fishermen work early, go back and get the best roosts, and then these guys aren't so good. And now when everyone else has gone home they have to just make up when there's less competition and they get the crappier roosts when they go home again. Yeah. This could be younger birds, you know, but because we've seen most of the most of the flocks have returned home, yeah. you know, to, to go squabble over nesting sites. We arrive the next morning at Fraser Island to a rainy welcome. Late summer here is characterised by short, sharp storms and squalls. Out of our electronics. Yeah, no, it's, we've, got, we've got an earth path going down through the um, into the water, but so this GPS can be completely disconnected. Yeah. With the back. The other one I've taken the fuses out. Off. Off. A serious storm out there. The line is not close. Nah. Yeah. Every now and then you just get this really, Woo. really yeah. fun like that. A like welding flash out there. We'll get a crack of thunder, it'll make it jump soon. Mm. We're underway again, feeling a little bit weary because last night we um, we woke up at about, well, we woke up to a bit of a storm, a, a small and short-lived storm falling down on us, hey Troy? The other thing I woke up and said, why are there waves? Yeah. You could hear that, there's a hiss down the side of the hull. Yeah. 
So the boat uh, ended up, obviously, the wind started blowing from the southwesterly, which we hadn't planned for, and the boat, it was a, this is where I need your help, a lee shore. So the boat was... Uh, we would anchored for northeasterly conditions and it turned into a southwest, yeah. which is beyond predicting, I guess, must have been. So in that case, the, the headland that was giving us shelter from the northeast became a lee shore really suddenly. Yeah. And as we swung around, we started to get into less and less water. Yeah. Um, and because we were going into the shallows, the waves were starting to break. Really, yeah. And once that situation gets up, like Marul will be picked up and carried by waves. And it doesn't matter if you've got a bit of water under you, the, the trough of each wave sort of picks you up. And we're actually starting to touch, touch the bottom. Touch the bottom, yeah. We we're in like a surf break. <laughs> <laughs> so there was like, yeah. waves crashing over um, the bow. So I just ran up and Troy obviously started the engine and just drove up. To where the anchor was and we pulled up the anchor and re-anchored. Just, just drove up. <laughs> so it doesn't in in all of these um in all of these high tech days you know where we got gps radar rah 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 when it's all confusion and night time is going on you're still going to have to use your compass because we had to know we uh, was able to take a bearing of where the wind was coming from and then gps has got a delay so i, I really basically just switched that over to the sounder and watched that yeah. I knew from the chart where our deeper water was, so I just looked at the compass and was just trying to maintain our headway. Um, so we needed to hold position against the waves. Even though we had power to just shoot out through them, we had to hold position so we could actually get the anchor on board. It mm. jumped out of its bow roller. Yep, and twice. <laughs> yeah, so I was lucky that we put these um, these HDPE Black rails plastic. on the on the hull join. Yep. Um, because they are just impervious to damage. So the chain was actually over them as it was coming up. It was too dangerous for Pascal to get her fingers in, and get the chain back on the roller. But you know, we got it done. So we made right. it. But then we, so we anchored out in the deeper water. Uh, but obviously because of that, really those really strong winds for that hour that the storm lasted, we just suffered like really bad seas and swells for the rest of the night, so we didn't really get any sleep. It was rubbish, wasn't it? <laughs> it was really bad. Yeah, those southwesterly waves, because the whole of Harvey Bay was the fetch, they still rolled in. Yeah. Then we had like a two knots of tide sort of holding us exactly side onto it all it. night. So I just spent the whole night trying to get things, stop things from rattling and falling out of shelves. Mm, I spent the night just muttering. Yeah. Anyway, we're underway now with a nice breeze. We're reaching with our spinnaker, which is really perfect, isn't it? Yep, so we, what we need to consider is in these conditions because it's coming onto autumn. So around here in the Brisbane Fraser area, you get these sudden onset thunderstorms and that's sort of, we got the outside edge of one of those. Mm. If, we'd, um, if we'd been in the center one, sometimes you can get destructive winds of up to 60 knots. So you don't want to be on a lee shore in 60 knots. It's hard to deal with. Yeah, that would have been full on with so driving rain probably. But at least there wasn't rain, but I got completely drenched. It would have been driving rain, 16 horsepower, trying to make it against four foot like breaking waves, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. So it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been a fun time. Woo! Six knots with <laughs> eight knots of wind. Yeah, there's just a few, the tops of the chop is just starting to come off a little bit. So we might even be getting just under 10 knots. So, and we're getting just under six knots out of this code zero here. The next morning was a glass out for our trip through the Sandy Straits.
Our system for catching rainwater couldn't be simpler. A hose attached by common fittings directs water to a container which can be used straight away or poured into our main storage tanks. Yeah, Tinkan Bay Coast Guard, just letting you know that we have passed reference point three over. A uh, reference point one, sorry. Over. Roger that, we will get back to you five nautical miles, miles south of Double Point Island. Well, I think we can uh, take the life jacket off now. <laughs> we like to be a little bit precautionary when we're doing a bar crossing, but uh, that was probably one of the easiest exits of an inlet bay that we've done in a long time. <laughs> we're not complaining. I don't even know if this audio is going to work because where I'm sitting on top of an engine, but I apologise if it's noisy. But it's time to take the jacket off, I think. Okay, that was a pretty uneventful bar crossing, which is exactly how we planned it. That's our favourite sort. <laughs> so, it was beautiful, just a little bit of a land breeze now. There's a bit of a lull and we're still motoring at the moment, but if I look up at, if I look up in the sky, there's a few what's called mare's tails and they're they're really high clouds. Sorry, I just thought I saw a whole bunch of bait fish. They're really high clouds. You can see them sort of wisping off, um, you know, as the as the wind, the higher level wind blows them away. And often, um, you know, they're a bit of a harbinger of change. So we're motoring at the moment, but I'm hoping that in a few hours, that those clouds will mean that we're going to be able to pop some sails and whistle down the coast and turn that noisy motor off. I shouldn't say noisy motor. It's just humming like a sewing machine at the moment since we've given it some love. It doesn't look like a sewing machine, but it's, it worked beautifully. Yeah, just letting you know that we've passed the point um, at Double Island Point, five miles south. Over. So yeah, we've spent the last few days using the tides to motor down the sand, uh, through the Sandy Straits on the western side of Fraser Island. And yesterday we took Anchorage um, at Pelican Point. And this morning we crossed the bra, as you saw. So we've actually been, we've been a pretty, oh, it's been good weather for us for a change. Um, because it hasn't been really strong southeasterlies and it's been really calm, we, the bar crossing was a pinch really because there was no swell and the seas were minimal. Well, there was a little bit of swell, but it was only like a metre or so. And now I'm having a ramble. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page, as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback and questions, so head on over to the comments section and drop us a line.